and we're going to talk about arc length. Now, just like we said on the front page, arc length goes with circumference. Sector area goes with circle area. So circumference is the distance around the outside. Circumference is really, y'all, is the same as perimeter. We say perimeter if we're talking about a rectangle. We say circumference if we're talking about a circle. So it's just the distance around the outside. So arc length is just a piece of that. And remember I said that's different from arc measure, which would be degrees. So arc measure would be like, if my central angle is 70 degrees, my arc measure is 70 degrees. This is more like centimeters or inches or feet. Makai. Makai. Makai, wake up. Head to page three, we'll change pages. All right, so we're looking at arc length now. Okay, so it's a piece of the circumference, which means a piece of, this is the formula for circumference. So we're talking a piece of two pi r. So let me just, we're not gonna write anything here. I just want to, I want you to follow along with me thinking, thinking aloud here. Okay, let's say I have a circle. Rylan, are you trying to talk to me? No, okay. I just saw your mouth moving. Let's say I have a circle that has a radius of four meters. Okay. The circumference of that circle is two times pi times four, so it's eight pi meters. Right? So if I said, I want you to tell me how far it is to go halfway around that circle. So, like, I want you to start here. I have a pet ant and I put him on the circle and I make him walk the circle like it's a track and I want to know how far he walked. Well, then I would say, well, that's half of the circle. So half of the circumference, right? And if I wanted to know my other pet ant, A and T, if I put him down and he went the opposite way and he worked, walked like a quarter of the circle, and I wanted to know how far he had walked, that would be a quarter of the circumference, right? This is all we're doing. We're taking a chunk of the circle circumference. We're saying, I want a fraction or a piece of the distance all the way around. And what we're using to tell us how big a piece to get is the degrees. So halfway around the circle, how many degrees would that be? 180. 180 over 360 is the same as one half. So the degrees in my central angle over 360 is the same as what fraction of the circle I need. One fourth, what's one fourth of the circle? How many degrees? Good, 90 degrees. So this would be the same as if I put 90 over 360 is one fourth of the circle. It's not always such a pretty fraction, but it is always the same idea. So that's what's happening in this formula here. We're putting our angle over 360, saying this is the fraction of the circle that I have. However many degrees out of 360. If it's 180 out of 360, that's half the circle. If it's 90 out of 360, that's a quarter of the circle. So this is my formula. The arc length is whatever piece of the circle I have times two pi r, because in other words, it's a piece of the circumference is the same size piece as degrees out of 360. So let's look at number one down here. Okay, my arc length is gonna tell, I'm gonna be told what, what piece of the circle I have. It's gonna be a piece of the total circumference. What's the total circumference here? Well, two times pi times r would be two times pi times 14. So that would be the whole circumference for this problem, right? but I don't have that whole circumference. We're talking about this part right here, that length, okay? How big a piece of the circle it is? Well, is it rather? It's 135 out of 360, that's how big a piece. So that's how I'll get my answer. Now let's talk about the practical matter of how do I simplify that? Two different ways. If I want to do it in exact form, if you're using this kind of calculator, remember it does a really good job of keeping things in exact form. 
But first thing you need to realize is that this is like, like a, over one. And when we multiply fractions, we multiply everything across the top. We multiply everything across the bottom. So basically, I'm multiplying all this stuff across the top. So 135. Let's see if I can get a better angle on that. 135. Oh, I want it to be clear. 135 third times the charm times 2 times pi times 14. That's everything across the numerators I'm multiplying. And then I divided by everything in the denominators, just 360 times 1. So just by 360. Amazingly, it didn't give me exact form after I told you it was going to. Okay, let's see if it'll give it to me if I press that button. Yep, this button works both ways. Sometimes with bigger numbers, it won't do it. But usually it'll give you both directions. So my exact answer here is 21 pi over 2. My approximate answer or my decimal approximation is 32.99. Two different ways of writing the same number, basically. Okay, so really all we did was we just said uh, the circumference is this. I want this sized piece of it. So we're going to do the same thing over here. What size piece of it are we taking on number two? A quarter. Remember, 90 out of 360 is a quarter. But you don't have to write it as one fourth. You can write it as 90 over 360 because it's the same thing. So go ahead and try to do the exact same thing I just did for number one for number two. Can you guys read this okay at home? The radius on this one is 19. I just feel like it's kind of blurry. It's a 90 degree angle and the radius is 19 kilometers. Brian, you with us on this one? Okay. Um, where will this be posted? The recording. See a couple people definitely have it. Smear, you got it? Ashley, do you want to tell us what you got for decimal? That's exactly what I got. Um, how about, oh, and what'd you get for the exact form? Nope. Malcolm, did you get the exact form? Okay, so that's the decimal approximation. That's the one. Perfect. Good. Here are both of those. Let's talk about how to get them. So I want a piece of the circumference. Well, the circumference is two times pi times 19. And I want a piece of that, which means something times that. Anytime we say of in math, we mean times usually. Okay, like certain percent of something we're gonna multiply. Okay, so 
How big a piece? We already said it's a quarter, but if you didn't know it was a quarter, you could say 90 over 360. So then I'm going to multiply. You could also do this. You can use the fraction button. I said go. You, you can multiply all the way across. That's especially if you have a calculator that doesn't have a fraction button. If you have a fraction button, why not go ahead and do 90 over 360 times 2 times pi times 19. And that gives me the exact form. Exact form is 19 pi over 2. And the decimal form is 29.85. Let me just point out, by the way, just because this is something people have trouble with, just kind of a random math numerical thing. If you have something like this, that means the exact same thing as this. If you have a, a fraction times a number, basically, it's the same as multiplying the numerator times that number. A lot of times where that comes up in math is in Algebra 2, we'll have stuff like this. And people won't realize they can treat it like this. That's just like 3 fourths of x. 3 pi over 4 or 3. Like if I have x over 2, that's the same thing as 1 half of x. Stuff like that. Okay. Rylan, I totally agree with your answers. Thank you for answering for me. I agree. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry you can't see me. I'm used to the camera working. I just gave you a thumbs up. So at least you can hear me, right? Okay. Next. This problem three is a little bit of a departure. It's not just straight out asking me for the arc length. In fact, they gave me the arc length already. Okay. So they're asking me to find something, and the way the problem's phrased actually is wrong. Okay, it says find the radius. Well, ta-da, I found it. So we're going to mark that out and say find the, what's missing here? What could I want to find? I could try to find the circumference. What else? The angle. They didn't tell me the angle. There's no angle shown. So that's what we're going to find, the central angle. Okay, find the central angle given the arc measure. Okay, so I'm gonna re I'm gonna sort of rewrite this a little bit more simple looking down here, but same thing. For the angle, I'm gonna say theta for the angle measure. I'm gonna let that stand for the angle. That's a that's a Greek letter that we very often let stand for a degrees. For so the arc length is theta over three sixty times 2 pi r. So what we're trying to find is theta. This is what we want. That's the angle. So the arc length is 67.6. And then I've got 2 times pi times 25. There's a lot of different ways I could go about simplifying this. Um, I think the first thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to say I have divided by 360. I want to get rid of that. So let's multiply both sides by 360, which basically just cancels it out over here. And that gives me 24336 equals. The angle times 2 times 25 is 50. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this 50 pi. And then what do I need to divide both sides by? Here's the angle. What else is with it? 50 pi. Be careful when you put this in your calculator. You have to make sure the 50 pi stays together. So like. Parentheses. 50 pi. 
and I get about, I'm going to go ahead and round this to a degree, whole degree, about 155 degrees. So when the thing that we are being asked for is not the arc length, it's a little bit messier to solve the equation. But we just plug in all the stuff that we do know and then solve for whatever it is we don't know. And if it's the angle we don't know, that's the theta. Sometimes it's the radius we don't know. 